So as the results rolled in and Joe Biden had another blowout performance, uh, Van Jones on CNN made a really solid point. He basically told the Democratic Party establishment that they need to be cognizant of the fact that they've got to do something to reach out to disaffected voters, primarily Bernie Sanders supporters, because young people overwhelmingly favor Bernie and young people don't like Biden. So you've got to do something. Take a look. Yeah, let me just say, say I, I think this is a very dangerous moment for the Democratic Party. Uh, you have now an insurgency that's about to be defeated. What do you do with the people that you defeat? There was a hope on the part of a lot of young people they had a champion. You got young people who are graduating with a quarter million dollars in debt. You got young people in, with a lot of pain and they had a champion. Mm -hmm. And that they thought that they were gonna be able to surround the a divided establishment with their movement, crush that divided establishment and move forward. Instead, the establishment united and stopped them. Now what do you do? Last time Bernie Sanders got beaten, there was an assumption that all his people were just gonna fall in line and vote against Trump. And there was not enough care for the concern and the pain of his base. I think tonight there's gonna be a lot of crowing, a lot of relief on the part of the establishment. But keep it temperate and turn, turn to those people and say, we want to be your champion. Yeah. If you don't do that, you're going to have a Pyrrhic victory. Now. I, there, I, there, I, there were a lot of Sanders supporters in key states who did not end up voting for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. That's exactly my I, point. Right. I, I agree. Biden should pivot to the general and reach out to young people in particular who supported Bernie and let them let them know I'm going to be your candidate and that he understands the fact that we have left the next generation a real house of cards. Yeah. Now, two things. Van Jones was actually attacked for making that very common sense point. And to Anderson Cooper's point, more Bernie Sanders supporters voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016 than Hillary Clinton supporters voted for Barack Obama back in 2008. Now, I don't know what the number is going to be in 2020, but what I will say to Van Jones' point is that it's, it's probably too late for the Democratic Party. And what I mean by that is, they can pay lip service to our ideals. They can maybe tacitly endorse some watered down version of Medicare for all or a means tested version of free college. But here's the problem. You haven't delivered our generation any results. And now you have another generation, Zoomers, who are old enough to vote. And as long as, as they've been eligible to vote, you've basically been slapping them across the face and spitting in their eyes. So it may be too late. Like, there may be nothing that you can say or do to win back these people. You may have created a generation of black-pilled non-voters, or at best, third-party voters who might support Democrats down the ticket, but vote Green Party. This is the reality of the situation, and people are going to blame me and other indie media hosts for saying, well, look, this is all because of you guys. No, the problem is, is the millions and millions of people who don't show up to vote. And Democrats, they really have an energy deficit. People don't come out to vote because they don't feel like either party is going to do anything for them. And sure, maybe they think that Democrats are, you know, a little bit better than Republicans, but they don't believe that the difference is big enough for a perceived payoff, right? Because you've got to stand in line for hours in Michigan there were college students standing in line for over three hours. Like, you can't have this happen. Like, when you have so many obstacles up to voting, closed primary states, voter suppression, voter ID laws in, you know, red states, you've got to understand that voting is a chore. Voting is a chore. So if Democrats ever want to have a shot at winning back millennials and Zoomers, what they need to do is actually deliver a policy. And no, don't just say you support Medicare for all. You've got to pass it. Like you have to pass it, sign it into law, and then give us health care. Like you can't just say, you know, well, maybe, you know, that's something we can do down the line. But first, we got to pass the public, pass the public option. You know, our goal is universal. No, you have to deliver. That's the only way you can win us back. And the problem is that in order for that to be the case, in order to deliver, uh, you need us to vote for you in the first place, right? You need to excite young voters and get them to come out and vote because voter apathy 
is a huge thing. But because you're so shitty, because Democrats have failed people, uh, failed these two generations so badly, they might not ever be able to get a chance to prove themselves because they fucked up so bad. I mean, in 2016, they ran Hillary Clinton, and that was a disaster. And then in 2020, they're putting up someone possibly who's worse than Hillary Clinton, has all the same neoliberal milquetoast right-wing policies as Hillary Clinton, albeit, you know, the person who's championing them is less coherent, and there's nothing exciting about Joe Biden. Uh, at least Hillary Clinton would have been the first woman president, which I think in and of itself would have been really cool to see. But with Joe Biden, it's just another old white dude who is saying that, you know, um, if he gets elected, we're not going to do shit about climate change at best. We rejoin the Paris Climate Accord. Uh, people are going to continue to die because of Medicare for all. I'm not going to do anything about your student loan debt. We're not going to legalize marijuana. I mean, how could you possibly expect people to pay the cost associated with voting when that requires them to take time off of work, when that requires them to actually take the time to come out and stand in line for hours? Like, this situation is is such a huge problem, and Democrats just will never know, or maybe they do know, uh, and they just don't care how much they messed up. And after nominating Hillary Clinton in 2016, and Joe Biden possibly in 2020, I mean, who's next? Mike Bloomberg in uh, 2024? Henry Cuellar in 2028? Dan Lipinski in 2032? I mean, <laughs> we're getting to the point where we'll be nominating Republicans. They just, they don't get it because everyone in that bubble is center-right and centrist. And then regardless of what happens, like if they lose, we will be um, blamed for it as we were in 2016 even though, again, more Bernie supporters supported Hillary than Hillary supporters supported Obama. Nonetheless, regardless, if you, you know, fall in line like a good little soldier and vote blue no matter who, you're still going to be blamed, right? And if you, if they somehow win, which I think is unlikely, you won't be credited for that victory. The Democratic Party has made it very clear that they want nothing to do with young people. They just, they don't want that support because they don't want to have to actually pass policies that will upset their donors, donors in the health industry, military industrial complex. Like there's a lot of, you know, uh, money to be made in these industries and a lot of campaign contributions to be given out. And they don't, they don't want to change that. Actually, you know, tailoring your policies to the desires of young people would require them to betray the trust of their donors. And they're just not willing to do that. So here we are. We're in a situation where we've got less than or a little over a decade uh, to act on climate change. We have tens of thousands dying every year because they don't have health insurance. And the situation just looks so grim and hopeless for young people. And that is, you know, the fault of our leaders. Not just Democrats, but Republicans as well. But I mean, like, what... I think a lot of people are realizing, and I saw a tweet from Glenn Greenwald that kind of said this, is that, you know, if we want true change in this country, we have to defeat the Democratic Party. Like, if we can beat them in the primaries, then we'll win in the general. Progressives win big. Obama beat two Republicans. The moderates lose, right? John Kerry, Hillary Clinton probably Joe Biden. And, you know, as I saw the results roll in, it was honestly astonishing. And I thought, look, all the Democrats were just talking about how they're totally cool with just like stealing the election. You had um, one representative, I think, from South Carolina talk about how, you know, it's not really the voters who choose. It's actually the party officials who choose the nominee. So I was thinking, oh, well, I wonder, because Joe Biden is such a terrible candidate, is there a chance that they'd replace him at the convention? But then I reminded myself, well, that presupposes that they actually want to win. And I genuinely don't think many Democrats want to win. I mean, if you're Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, if you've, get, if you've got another four years of Donald Trump, then you can fundraise off of Donald Trump. He's great for fundraising. You can, you know, sit back, not pass any policies or pass policies, and then say, well, look, we tried to pass them, but the Republicans, 
won't allow a vote in the Senate. Like, they want an excuse. They don't actually want to give us policies. I mean, when they had a supermajority, they could have done so much to change our lives. And we got a right-wing healthcare reform plan. Not even a public option. So, I mean, the Democratic Party is just... I don't know what to say about them. It may be too late for them. They may never be able to win over millennials and Zoomers. Because they're not adopting any of the policies that we want. And even if they pay lip service to these policy ideas, that still probably isn't going to be enough. With how bad they've you know hurt their credibility, they actually have to deliver. That's the only way I can ever see myself being enthusiastic to support another Democrat. If they actually like pass Medicare for all, that would change my entire outlook. Like I would still disagree with them on other issues, but at least they pass something that really transforms our lives. But I just can't see a situation where they do that because they're too stubborn and self-interested. So here we are. Uh, Van Jones has a very uh, important message for them. Will they listen? Probably not. And if you uh, look at the response in uh, centrist donut Twitter, they were very much not uh, not okay with what he was saying. All right, you reap what you sow. You know they're they're uh, definitely excited about the fact that the Bernie Bros are crying now, but you're gonna cry in November if you continue to do this because voters aren't excited to vote for Joe Biden. You know Donald Trump is going to mop the floor with him, and this is something that we tried to warn you about. Donald Trump is a fascist. He's a disaster. And you rolled the dice with the worst possible candidate. I mean, actually, Bloomberg's probably the worst, but I mean, out of all the people in the field, what, 20 plus candidates, you chose one of the worst. So, I mean, all right, that's uh, that's that's where we're at. This is your fault. You can't blame voters. You can't blame anyone else but yourselves. This is what the Democrats wanted. This is what the establishment wanted. And this is what they're getting.